1986, Porsche's 911 Turbo had just returned to the United States after a really long absence. My first adventure in the premier issue of Automobile Magazine was about driving that turbo from Detroit to Porsche's headquarters, which was then in Reno, Nevada. That adventure pretty much cemented my role as the Perils of Pauline editor. For our 25th anniversary issue, we thought it would be fun to recreate that trip in Porsche's new turbo to its new headquarters in Atlanta. What a difference 25 years makes. Back then, Porsche required journalists to have a racing license just to drive the turbo. Looking back, that turbo had all of 282 horsepower compared with the current model's 500 horsepower. In 1986, the turbo did 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds with a top speed of 157 miles an hour. The current model, 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds. Oh, and by the way, that's with the convertible model and a top speed of 193 miles an hour. So for this trip, the first thing I needed was a driving companion, and who better than the greatest endurance racing driver ever, Hurley Haywood. Victorious twice at Sebring, five-time winner at the 24 Hours of Daytona, three-time winner at Le Mans, and yet he'd done only one cross-country road trip, which was with me, by the way, in 1994, the One Lap of America. On a 6,000-mile trip like that, you either love your driving partner or you walk away hating their guts. Hey, let's put the top down, baby. No let's shit. go. Well, since I called him for this trip and he came from the warmth of Florida to single-digit temperatures in Detroit, you can figure out what kind of relationship we have. Now, we couldn't just drive straight to Atlanta on an interstate. Where's the fun and adventure in that? So we set out with two priorities. Priority number one, great roads. We were heading through Tennessee, and Tennessee has them. More specifically, Tale of the Dragon and the Cherahala Skyway. Priority number two, food, obviously, and more specifically, barbecue. We had hoped to detour to Owensboro, Kentucky on our way to Nashville for some mutton barbecue. That's right, barbecued sheep. But there just wasn't enough time. So instead, we hauled ass to number two on our list of barbecue joints, Smokin' Joe's Barbecue and Fish. The food was everything we wanted at Smokin' Joe's and more. Big honkin' catfish sandwiches, barbecue on cornbread pancakes, and one total character in Joe. Mm. That's what makes it special when they eat it. Can't hear a pin fall. Everything's quiet. When everything's quiet, then you know then that you're getting the best. It way champ of the world. Smoke and go. So we ate lunch at four o'clock and then rushed straight down to Nashville's Honky Tonk Row. And yes, more barbecue. Not quite as good as Joe's, but satisfying nonetheless, and a really cool neon sign. I'd expected to get Hurley into one of the honky-tonks for a true Nashville live music experience, but he turned them down one after another after another. Oh, I did get him into a boot store. Glad I didn't buy the pink ones. Wish I bought the black ones. And then he finally saw where he wanted to go. Margaritaville, a chain. At least it had a live band. The next morning, I rousted everyone up in the pouring rain on a forced march out into the countryside south of Nashville, past Barney Fife's speed trap, for one last great meal. With the General Lee parked in a field out back, Jed Clampett's truck out front, we went into Puckett's Grocery and Restaurant and Breakfast Nirvana. We had the most incredible meal. 
the best bacon I've ever eaten in my life. Biscuits to die for, by the way, secret ingredient, double lard, and we ate like pigs. Now for priority number one, great roads. And one of the most infamous is Tale of the Dragon. 318 turns in just 11 miles, hugging the southern edge of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It's beautiful, even in the pouring rain and heavy fog, which Hurley referred to as barbecue smoke. It wasn't a speed test, but it was still a blast in a 911 turbo, even from the passenger seat with a driver like Hurley at the wheel. The Tale of the Dragon turned out to be just the warm-up. The real thrill and challenge came when we tried to take the mile-high Cherahala Skyway from North Carolina back into Tennessee in deep slushy snow, in the dark, with barely one lane plowed, no cell coverage, in heavy fog, and nary another human being or car, thank God, for miles around. In a Porsche 911 Turbo, those are the kind of motoring adventures we're famous for. So, we finally pull into Porsche's training center, proud that we'd gone through that high adventure. But I have to tell you, and this is a secret Porsche owners know, this turbo isn't that hard to drive. It's extremely forgiving of driver error and almost telepathic in the way it seems to anticipate what you're trying to do. It can make you look like a hero on any road in any conditions, even if you're not Hurley Haywood.